For the past few days, I've been trying to make a song in the style of the old NES games. It seemed like a simple process at first. All I should have to do was incorporate the standard chiptune instruments from the time and compose away. So I got to work. Two pulse waves, a triangle, and two tracks of white noise were more than enough to pump out a bang into. But something was off. While the track itself was fine, it sounded nothing like the music I'd come to expect from the Nintendo. As it turns out, I may have unknowingly violated nearly every rule limiting the music on that system. Uh, let me explain. The NES is ancient, and its computing power is very limited. While machines like my Mac can play several sounds at once no problem, the Nintendo may only ever produce five at a time, meaning my guitar riffs over power chords may have been slightly impossible. It's this five-channel sound chip and its implications for music composed on the Nintendo that limits and gives unique charm to these older tracks. As I mentioned, the NES can only ever play five sounds at once. It's why sound effects tend to override in-game music on the console. But beyond simply limiting voices, each individual channel is dedicated exclusively to making one type of sound one note at a time. Two channels are locked into making only sine waves, one is bound to the triangle, an additional channel is dedicated noise maker, and the remaining channel is programmable, allowing composers to sample an instrument of their choice. This makes my song even more ridiculous. A four note chord on a triangle wave simply can't exist on a system which only generates one note for that instrument at a time. Even though the combination of instruments I used is in line with the five channel sound card for the NES, my blissful unawareness of the original Nintendo's built in limitations led me to create something totally out of whack with the music I tried to emulate. But looking back at these older tunes and their technical limitations has given me a whole new appreciation for how good some of them actually were. You begin to notice clever workarounds in songs you've heard a thousand times before, like the use of arpeggios to get around the one sound per track limit, or the unique bongo drum sample used in Mario 3, or the use of keyed down triangle waves of all things to strengthen the drum beats in Silver Surfer. It's given me all new insight and appreciation for some of my favorite retro video game tracks. So while I wasn't able to make an NES song myself, I am glad I at least discovered just how difficult it was to do so. With all this in mind, I should be able to go back through my song and change it to follow the rules I mentioned, and make it sound a lot more retro. All I'd have to do is basically rewrite the whole song from scratch, and it only took me a little over 10 hours to do it the first time, without any additional restrictions, so... Uh...